Hey, you. Yes, I'm talking to you. Are you absolutely sure you are a conscient being and not just an algorithm programmed to watch this video? And what about your pet sitting next to you? Are you certain they know they're watching this video even if they won't understand it one bit? Are you 100% positive that at this moment you are indeed watching this video? Is it definitely happening and you are not imagining it? Are you conscious? And if so, have you ever wondered where your consciousness comes from? Maybe the answer to that question is deeply hidden in the quantum realm. Welcome to Fact Nominal. And today, let's find out if your consciousness originated in the quantum world. Consciousness is loosely defined as knowledge and understanding that something is happening or exists. It allows us to be aware of our surroundings and our own mental, physical, and emotional state. It is quite interesting that we experience consciousness every day and all of our experiences and knowledge come from being conscious. However, ironically, we don't have full knowledge or understanding of what consciousness is or where it comes from. Scientists have been trying to understand this phenomenon for centuries, and still they have no idea what makes a clear blue sky feel serene, but the screech of badly tuned violence doesn't. We need a satisfying scientific theory of consciousness that would predict under what conditions we experience something and what is responsible for it. Is it a complex circuit of neurons, or silicon transistors, or is it something else? By figuring out the differences in sensations, we can figure out the functions that it fulfills. Moreover, we will understand where consciousness comes from. Is it in the brain? Can plants, fungi, or bacteria be conscious? And most importantly, a question that has been troubling us since the movie Terminator came out in 1987. Can AI be conscious? We have been researching for years to understand the mapping of neuron interactions in the brain to figure out how a three-pound organ with a consistency similar to tofu can exude the feelings that is known as being alive. And we have come up with a couple of theories. The Global Neuronal Workspace Theory asserts that consciousness emerges when an entire physical system has access to information and processes it in a particular way. If that is correct, then any computer program could become conscious. Not gonna lie, but how Instagram skulks on everything in my phone, it does give me the creeps sometimes. But then again, we aren't entirely sure if Mark Zuckerberg is an actual human or an already conscious AI posing as a human. The integrated information theory has a very contrasting opinion and proposes that consciousness requires specialized physical structures that interact with the world. It means that there has to be a tangible organic vessel with sensory receptors to evolve consciousness and therefore consciousness cannot be computed. So we don't have any reason to fear the rise of Skynet? Integrated information theory further asserts that consciousness won't work in the form of an algorithm, in the same manner that a simulated black hole would not generate actual gravity. A solid point, but just like global neuronal workspace theory, integrated information theory has some experimental evidence to support it, but both are quite far from being confirmed. In theory, artificial intelligence can be created using a quantum computer. If that AI becomes self-aware, its consciousness would depend on the quantum effects of the quantum computer it is running on. This works well with the integrated information theory that consciousness requires a coherent physical system. However, a self-aware quantum AI wouldn't prove that consciousness requires macroscopic quantum effects to occur. Similarly, according to the global neuronal workspace theory, an AI could become self-aware even if it was running on classical computers which is not the case here as we need a quantum computer. So it is quite possible that the real answer to the question, what exactly is consciousness, could be a middle ground between the two theories or entirely somewhere else. To find that middle ground where the fundamental understanding of consciousness could lie, we have to look deep into the fundamental laws governing our universe, quantum physics. But to go there, to properly explore this possibility, we need to first shortlist what we already know about consciousness. Let's make one thing abundantly clear before diving deep into this rabbit hole. When we are talking about consciousness, we are not referring to intelligence. The two concepts may seem related and also may be exclusively available to living beings. Still, there is a definitive difference. Intelligence is obvious. For example, we can say a simple inanimate object like a rock can't be intelligent. 
Like the saying, dumb as a rock, it can be proven easily. Just go and ask a rock what 2 plus 2 is, and I can assure you it will not have the answer. Nor will it get out of your way if you were to throw a sledgehammer at it. But can you prove the rock is not conscious? That's where things get tricky. There is no way to prove if a rock has consciousness or not because it doesn't display any outward signs of awareness. But there is an argument that a rock should not have consciousness because it doesn't need it. According to this theory, consciousness is exclusive to organisms, as they likely evolved it to survive. Awareness helps a life form in many ways, finding nutrients, locating mates, monitoring one's internal state, reacting to threats, and communicating and socializing with other organisms. To be honest, awareness or consciousness enables unlimited possibilities. And when you put consciousness and intelligence together, the horizon gets broader, as conscious organisms can think of new survival strategies and even develop traits like creativity and imagination. But we're not going to get into that. We're asking a more primordial question at the moment. Life, intelligence, and consciousness are emergent properties that occur when a group of things form. An atom itself isn't alive, but when it forms an organic combination of carbon and some other chemicals, it does actually become alive. Similarly, a single brain cell isn't intelligent or self-aware, but when you have enough of them working together, firing neurons between them, they become sentient. So, as you can see, complex phenomena like self-awareness or consciousness arise from a simple process, and that provides us two explanations. We need our brains to be conscious, and the brain is made up of countless subatomic particles that all operate under the quantum field theory. Therefore, you could argue, consciousness must arrive from quantum mechanics. However, this paralogism is a bit far-reaching because it establishes an indirect link between consciousness and quantum mechanics. It doesn't explain whether consciousness itself exhibits quantum properties. And so, we need another explanation which details the quantum mechanics behind the actual function of neurons inside the brain. Quantum physics asserts that particles don't exist in just one place at a time. The probability a particle will be observed at a specific location is determined by its wave function. Wave functions are mathematical tools used to describe individual particles as well as groups of particles. When a particle or group of particles is observed, its wave function collapses to a single point. This is sometimes misperceived as consciousness allowing someone to collapse this wave function with their mind. That is, they can change the reality with their consciousness. What actually causes wave functions to collapse has to do with what we mean when we say a particle is observed. Observing a particle really means measuring its properties in some way which requires physical interaction between the particle and the measurement device. When the particle interacts with the measuring device, the quantum state of the particle becomes entangled with the quantum states of the particles composing or being emitted by the measuring device. As more particles get entangled together, decoherence occurs. Decoherence is responsible for the wave function collapsing and it's governed by the physical interactions between particles. The only known way for a conscious being to collapse a wave function is to physically interact with it in some way. So, you can collapse a wave function with your mind, but it's the same as moving objects with your mind. No, no, we aren't talking about telekinesis here. When you hear your phone ringing and you pick it up, it's basically your mind telling you to grab it and turn it on. So, in a way, you are moving an object with your mind, because your mind controls your hand. When an observer purposefully collapses the wave function of a particle, their mind tells their body to interact with it in some way. This could be as simple as touching the particle or as precise as operating a particle detector. We live in a very large universe and particles are constantly interacting with each other, making the universe have its own incredibly complicated wave function. A person is a large group of particles as well. Large systems of particles decohere so they don't exhibit the same quantum properties as the particles that make them up. However, some special quantum phenomena do occur on the scale of living things. Quantum biology is basically quantum physics behind the processes essential for living things to exist, evolve, and survive. Plants have chromoplasts, birds have specialized proteins to sense the Earth's magnetic field. A quantum tunneling probably is the cause behind mutations occurring in DNA. If we find macroscopic quantum effects essential to neural activity, 
it would be an indicator that the integrated information theory is correct. And quantum mechanics is one of the essential features a physical system must utilize to become conscious. Earlier in the video, we discussed how consciousness helps organisms to better sustain themselves. Macroscopic quantum effects have been proposed as a possible requirement for conscious systems, and there are multiple ways they might occur among neurons in the brain. If we dig deeper into quantum biology, we may unlock how the most basic law of the entire universe allows us to experience free will. How we use that information is totally on us. Many suggest that it could change humanity forever. So what do you think? Are we related to the universe on a quantum level? Tell us in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching Fact Nominal.